It is getting personal between Donald Trump and Nikki Haley. Two weeks before South Carolina's Republican primary, the former president is taking personal shots at Haley. Rather than focusing on policy differences, he mocked her husband for not being with her out on the campaign trail. He is currently deployed overseas with the South Carolina National Guard. But here's what he said. Where's her husband? Oh, he's away. He's away. Where, what happened to her husband? What happened to her husband? Where is he? He's gone. He knew. He knew. Again, he is deployed overseas right now. And moments ago, uh, the former South Carolina governor hit back at Donald Trump, demanding that the former president confront her directly. Donald Trump had a rally today. And in that rally, he mocked my husband's military service. And I'll say this. Donald, if you have something to say, don't say it behind my back. Get on a debate stage and say it to my face. If you mock the service of a combat veteran, you don't deserve a driver's license, let alone being president of the United States. Ron, Nikki Haley slammed Trump for um, his remarks earlier today, saying in a post on X, quote, Michael is deployed serving our country, something you know nothing about. Uh, someone who continually disrespects the sacrifices of military families has no business being commander in chief. You know, Ron, uh, Trump has repeatedly uh, mocked people serving their country yeah. in uniform. What do you make of this? Yeah, I mean, and this is part of the strangeness, I think, of the entire Republican uh, primary. I mean, that language from Nikki Haley is in line with much tougher criticism that she's offering of him on a variety of fronts that simply was not there in all of 2023 when she had the forum of Republican uh, debates uh, in Iowa and New Hampshire in the early stages of the race when the media attention was most intense uh, and the concrete had not hardened in this race. She was not criticizing Trump in anywhere near the terms that she is across the board. And it's really not just her. You know, we know from General John Kelly, who served as Trump's own White House chief of staff and his head of Department of Homeland Security, uh, that Trump, he has confirmed in statements the reporting originally in The Atlantic, that Trump referred to military service members as losers and suckers. Well, right. is John Kelly going to go on camera somewhere and discuss that rather than just issue a statement? I mean, Trump has had this kind of, uh, you know, um, Ron DeSantis described it as a Praetorian guard of defenders in conservative media. But certainly the Republicans inside the GOP coalition who have reservations about his conduct and behavior and inclinations haven't exactly been telling their voters, uh, sharing those concerns with their voters in an unvarnished way. And Ron, is Trump going to pay a price for this? Um, I think it depends. I mean, a lot of it is baked in, Jim, obviously. You know, you. I think he already is paying a price. You have a president in, in Joe Biden who's appropriating is stuck at 40 percent. Uh, but the two of them are essentially in a dead heat. That's what I call the Trump tax, that Biden runs further ahead of his approval rating than uh, presidents typically are able to do. And we saw that in 2022. There already is a price. Um, but the real question is whether those senior officials in a Trump administration, like General Kelly, like Mark Esper, who I think you'll be talking to shortly, uh, Bill Barr, James Mattis, John Bolton, are they going to go out in a more visible way and share their concerns with the public that, you know, they believe Trump is unfit to be president? Um, and, you know, the question of whether they are going to be willing to say that in a highly public way, uh, I think will answer your question of how much uh, cost there ultimately is for him. Uh, and, on and Ron, things. yeah, and Ron, earlier today, Trump was taking credit, bragging once again for tanking the bipartisan border deal. Let's listen to that. Yeah. This week, we also had another massive victory that every conservative should celebrate. We crushed crooked Joe Biden's disastrous open borders bill. Mike Johnson did a very good job, and the whole group did a great job in Congress. We crushed it. We saved America from yet another horrific Biden betrayal. Ron, in the previous hour, I tried to press uh, Congressman Tim Burchett on this. He would not accept uh, what I was saying, that essentially Trump pressured the Republicans into, into killing this. He didn't, he didn't want to go there. But isn't that the case? Sure. I mean, uh, it, it was a clear indication that this is 
uh, a Trump party. Um, and, you know, um, I think it is important to look not only at uh, Trump's actions here, but what the alternative is that he is putting forward. You know, because of the way the Republican primary has played out and, and, and the manner I was just talking about, there really has been extraordinarily little debate about Trump's agenda for a second term. But, but he has put forward a much more militant and very specific agenda compared to what he ran on in 16 or 20. And one of the areas that is the most militant and specific uh, are his plans on immigration. I mean, he has talked, he, you know, he said on Friday night, Jim, uh, Friday afternoon at the NRA, that within moments, quote unquote, within moments of taking office, he would begin a mass deportation program. Stephen Miller has put out extraordinary detail about how they intend to do this with large scale raids in major cities, moving people to internment camp in Texas and then removing them from the country uh, in constant flights. I talked to a former ICE chief of staff this week who said that would take 100 to 150,000 law enforcement personnel plus another 50,000 people to run these camps. And one of the ways they are talking about doing this openly and explicitly is requisitioning National Guard troops from red states and sending them into blue states whose governors won't cooperate. So you're talking about the National Guard from Texas or Arkansas going into the west side of Chicago potentially to deport people and think about what that might, how that might play out in practice. And I think this is, uh, you know, could, could you imagine scenes of, na of federal law enforcement and National Guards from out of state in conflict with local police that are defending a church where migrants have, have, have kind of, you know, rushed for, for safety. The, the, the question of what a second Trump term would mean across the board really has not been engaged by anyone, uh, including Biden, but certainly not by the other Republicans. Uh, and, it, yeah. you know, it is an open question how much a part of the debate that's going to be between now and November. Well, and Ron, the Senate also uh, had an unusual weekend session this weekend to try to pass yeah. aid to Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan. And, you know, one of the issues is, is, is Trump going to take that deal as well? I mean, earlier this afternoon at this rally in South Carolina, he yeah. was essentially saying to Russia, go ahead and invade NATO countries if that's what you want to do. If these NATO countries aren't putting enough money into NATO, right. th this is the way he describes it, then he's not going to defend them, he says, as president, if they are attacked by Russia. I mean, you, you juxtapose that with, I mean, I was speaking with Patty Davis, the daughter of former President Ronald Reagan, yep. the late president in the previous hour. That is not Ronald Reagan's Republican Party. No. Yeah, and I don't think Trump has to tank this deal in the same way of direct intervention because so many uh, of the uh, Republican senators have moved in that direction. Now, they may be 10 willing to move this forward, it, it kind of the, the remnants of the Reagan party that saw the U.S. standing up against aggression, uh, Russian aggression as, you know, a central part of the GOP uh, identity. Um, but, you know, th this again is part of what I was just saying, we are we are not really at a point where there has been much discussion or debate about what a Trump second term would mean. And one of the reasons, you know, he says he would settle the Ukraine war within 24 hours. And I think most people uh, understand that to mean that he would force Zelensky and Ukraine to accept Russian control over a significant part of the country by threatening to cut off uh, their aid. And I think that is what many of the critics ultimately uh, in the Republican Party envision. It's just one of many. We could, you know, we could talk about tariffs. Uh, we could talk about uh, set, using the Insurrection Act to send federal forces into blue cities to fight crime or, or round up the homeless. I mean, there, there's a broad array of issues on which he has laid out a very specific agenda that simply hasn't been addressed much yet uh, in the context of this presidential race. Right. Well, there, there have been other things that have been talked about in the news over the last several days. And I'm glad that, yeah. Ron, you're, you're highlighting the issues because that's where uh, voters are going to be looking to, to try to parse out where they're going to stand uh, when it comes down to these two choices coming up in November. Ron Brownstein, as always, thank you very much. Really appreciate it.